time, weather, and... Hello and welcome to Driving with Todd. And I'm Todd. About 20 years ago, that's my guess, I bought this reel-to-reel tape. It's a share album, which was released in 1969, and it's called 3614 Jackson Highway. I never listened to it, and I didn't actually realize I had it, because several years ago, it was issued on vinyl, 180 gram vinyl. And I wanted to get a copy of it, because I just love the cover of this album. It's a, it's a great cover. And I, I do like Cher a lot. And I thought, okay, that'd be really great to have on vinyl. Well, it was limited edition, and I missed out on getting it. Well, as I've been looking through my reel-to-reel tapes, I found this. And I, like I said, I didn't realize I actually had it. So I put it on yesterday, and the album is fantastic. Now, why was it named 3614 Jackson Highway? Well, it was named after the Muscle, the Muscle Shoals studio that uh, she recorded the album in, and that's in Sheffield, Alabama. She also used the Muscle Shoals rhythm section as her backing band. She had three great producers on this album, Jerry Wexler, Tom Dowd, and Arif uh, Martin. And the album is, like I said, fantastic. Very soulful album. Very different from anything else I heard by Cher. And this is her first album on Atco Records and her last album on Atco Records because it didn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, Sonny and Cher was up to about 1967 a very hot band. But as music started to change and get more mature, more psychedelic, more heavy, a lot more guitar, their style of music started to wane. So this album was to be a comeback album for Cher, and she did all cover songs of popular uh, artists at the time, like Bob Dylan, uh, Otis Redding, the Buffalo Springfield. So it, it had a lot of good tracks on it, but I think it was just overlooked by the populace, they were buying other types of music. The album did reach 160 on Billboard's uh, 200 album chart, so it didn't really go anywhere. And again, it was her first and last album for Atco, and then she moved on and actually had a great career in the 1970s, probably better than what she had in the 60s. So I thought, I want to do a song off of this, Every song is is actually really, really good. And, and Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section, you know, dynamic uh, backing band. She had four excellent female vocalists doing backup for her on this album as well. And Sonny is on the cover of the album, which is kind of cool. So if you, if you take a hard look at the cover of the album, you'll see Sonny Bono on there as well. In fact, it says on the back of the tape that... Um, Recorded at Muscle Shoals Sound Studio, Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And it says, uh, recording engineer Tom Dowd, photography Stephen Paley, Elm Design Stanislaw Zagorski, and spiritual guidance Sonny Bono. So he, he was the spiritual guidance for this album. So the song I picked, there's actually two songs that knock my socks off on this album. And I'm, I'm going to do a reaction to the other song, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, in the, in the near future. Because it's, it's just so different from what I would expect of that particular song. But the one that I want to do is Sitting on the Dock of a Bay. Now, this is written by Otis Redding and Steve Cropper. And again, was a big hit for Otis Redding. Unfortunately, he had passed away before it was a hit. And this is a great cover version done by Cher. So here we go with Cher covering Otis Redding's Sitting on a Dock of a Bay. Here's Sonny Bono, right here. <laughs> if you can check it out, he's right there. Okay, here we go. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening come Watching the ships roll in 
Then I'll watch them roll away again Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Oh, I, I, the, the, the beginning is incredible. I, I, I love the way they layer in the instruments on the beginning of this song. You know, it starts out with that keyboard. The acoustic guitar comes in. Cher starts singing. They bring the bass guitar in, and they keep on layering more, layering more and more instruments onto the song before they get to the refrain in the song. I think that is really great. We're only 43 seconds into the song, so I'm going to take it back and start it over. Listen to the layering of the instruments and how Cher's voice is just perfect on singing these lines. Give it a good listen. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening come Watching the ships roll in Then I'll watch them roll away again Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Left my home in Georgia Headed for the Frisco Bay I have nothing to live for Look like nothing gonna come my way I'm just sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time So, so do, you, do you hear that? Do you hear all that layering? I, I love that. I think that's a, a backwards guitar in there too. Uh, that was just playing right when she was singing. But it was like she'd sing a verse and then they'd bring in another instrument. She'd sing another verse, or not verse, but a line to the verse. I'm sorry, but a line to the verse. And then they'd bring in another instrument and they kept on layering them. And then they bring the drum in and, and they got some strings in there. I mean, horns come in. Muscle Shoals, what a fantastic backing group they are. And this song has that real soulful feel. Like I said, I think this album is probably one of Cher's best attempts at doing soul music. And um, you know, I, 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 she's got the voice for it, and she's just kind of singing it. She's not like, she's putting a little bit of emphasis in it, but it's almost like it's it's natural for her, that she's not even thinking about it. She's just singing these lines, and it comes out so natural. Very, very cool. Let's keep on going. Ten people tell me to do So I guess I'll remain the same Sitting here resting my bones And this lone Okay, that part of the song Okay, that part of the song When she gets into, you know, that the, the section where uh, it's supposed to like Sort of, you know, everybody has who does this song Has to raise their voice a little bit Has to hit some high notes she hits it perfectly. She hits it perfect. You can you can feel every word she's saying. I just love how she puts all the emphasis into that section of the song. And it's again, there are songs that have these these pieces where you really need to hit some high notes. You need to really be a little bit louder, a little bit more assured. And this is one of those songs, and she hits it perfectly. I'm gonna take it back and play that again. I mean, that was just really really good.
Here we go. Right here. Look like nothing's gonna change. Everything still remains the same. I can't do what ten people tell me to do. So I guess I'll remain the same. Sitting here resting my bones. And this loneliness won't leave. Wow. I, I just, like I said, the first time I heard this song was yesterday, this, this version of this song. And I went, holy cow, that is really an excellent take on sitting on the dock of a bay. I mean, it's first of all, it's done by a female, where the original is done by a, a man, a male. And then it still has that soulful feel, but not quite the same as Otis Redding um, portrayed the song. This has got a little bit different feel to it. It's, it's a little bit more jazzy. And, you know, it's got the brass in there. It's got the layered instruments in there. And then Cher has a whole different interpretation on how to present the song lyrically. And I really, like I said, I really like how she does it because it's like she's not putting any emphasis. Uh, Otis Redding's version, there's some emphasis in there. There was some some angst in there. You could you could you could feel that he was really working this song through. Well, Cher was just like almost like you know sitting back and just singing it, just singing the song out, but. Because her voice is so strong, she she does a marvelous job on this song. And that that middle eight section, I, I just love it when she she sings that. It's it, she's got that that voice. She's got a little bit of crackle in her voice when she does that. Fantastic, and it's fun too because she's not taking the song out. She sort of just ends singing, and then Muscle Shoals takes the song out with the rhythm section with a short instrumental break. Very very cool version of this song. I just wanted to share it with um, the viewers of Driving With Todd. I don't know if anybody's ever heard this before or even heard of this album before because, like I said, it just didn't go anywhere, and um, it's unfortunate. But it's what, what I think is interesting, uh, I'll listen to an album today that just didn't make it when it was first released, let's say in the 60s or the 70s, and then you listen to it today, and you go, wow, that was incredible. I mean, the, the musical backing track fantastic the vocals were really really great you know and, and and you see so much more in the particular song i think today than what you might have thought back in the older days because there was so much other music that you could be listening to so when you're listening to this today you're like it's almost an awakening and and that's what i had with this particular album and and like i said i bought it like 20 25 years ago just never listened to it you know it was a share album i was buying every reel to reel tape i could could find and i just bought it you know put it in my collection and until now when i rediscovered it um I, i'm amazed it's a fantastic album so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you enjoyed share doing her cover version of sitting on the dock of a bay and if you did hit that like button that'd be really appreciated if you have any comments about share singing the song sitting on the dock of the bay or you know this particular album 3614 uh, Jackson Highway. If you've heard this album, you might want to comment on that as well. Now, I'm going to take a link to this video. I thought it was kind of a nice video. There's a lot of stills to share from uh, all different points of her life. It, it would have been kind of cool if it had all been right around 1969, but it was kind of fun seeing all the different uh, personalities, you could say, of Cher through the years. And so I'm going to take a link to this video and put it in my description below. So if you want to watch it again, just pick on that link. It'll open up and play for you, and I won't be stopping it. I'm also going to put a link to the channel that uploaded this video 
into my description below. So you might want to click on that link, check out that channel. There might be some other really good videos that you want to watch. Now, have you subscribed to Driving with Todd? If you haven't and you look back at my library of videos that I have out there, you'll see that I'm all over the place. I don't sit on one genre. I'll, I'll play it different years, uh, different decades, different genres, many, many different artists, and we're just having a lot of fun. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. If you haven't already done that, just go below this video. There's a subscribe button right below the title of the video. Hit that subscribe button and you've done it and you'll be making me very happy. If you go over here and ring the bell, you'll get updates to my latest videos. So again, I, I heard this yesterday. I thought it was fantastic and uh, I wanted to share it with everybody because like I said, I'm not sure if anybody has heard this version of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay before. So this put a huge smile on my face. I'm hoping put a huge smile on your face and peace out, baby.